everybody we want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Connor Poise podcast thank you guys for rocking with us here um this week and so I want to introduce myself I am one of the co-hosts here Everett Stevenson joined by my other co-host hi everybody my name is Malik Foster a co-host for the Connor Poise podcast hey everybody welcome to our Connor Poise podcast I am your third co-host Samantha Adams um and today uh oh Today, we are talking about the digital revolution. And um, more in particular, we're talking about Facebook and its name change to Meta and the things that, that, uh, that they intend on embarking on as it relates to the metaverse and how they wanna go ahead and uh, smash those two things together. So we're gonna get into that. But before we get into that, I wanna go ahead and highlight our Black Business of the Week. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. Called the For the Culture brand. Each one, teach one is their mantra and they sell clothes. So um, let's see if I can see, show some of the products that they have. They have their own brand, as you can see. And they also have um, t-shirts, mugs, hoodies, and y'all know it's hoodie season. so. Uh, make sure you go get your one and the holidays are coming up. They got bags, masks, um, all kinds of goodies. So um, you guys make sure you tap into them. Um, I'm not gonna go through all 18 pages. Look at they even got box of briefs for men, scullies, masks, uh, laptop toe sleeves, bags. toe bags, all kinds of good stuff. So if you want to check them out, the website is the number four, the culturellc.com. So that's the number four, theculturellc.com. You can, that's their website. You can also find them on Instagram as well. Um, so make sure you check them out and tap, tap, tap in with them. Um, so again, yeah, like I was saying that we are going to be talking about um, Meta. And so I, um, we have a video. Just give me one second. Is deciding and wants to do a lot of talking, but I'm gonna go ahead and play this video. Um, you guys, let me know if you can see. Whoops, see my, see my screen. And so, yeah, for those I oh, know, I'm saying I mentioned it, but uh, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, this clip is by the Guardian, by the way. A uh, name change from, um, or I was saying how Facebook recently just said that they were going from changing their name from Facebook to Meta, kind of similar to how. Um, Google went from Google to Alphabet um, in a sense, but this is a little bit different in regards to, like you said, because it's going to be more centered around the um, their adoption to the metaverse. So, yeah, I just want to give a little fun fact in that. Okay, so here's the um, video from The Guardian. We'll go ahead and hit play on it. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually, it has things that are only possible virtually, and it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. All right, perfect. Boy. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Hi. Mark. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're floating in space. Cool. How they got made this place. All... That's awesome. Right? Anyone it's from the crater. I met in LA. Uh, this place is amazing. <laughs> Boz, is that you? Of course it's me. You know I had to be the robot, man. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs> Whoa. You're fired. I knew you were bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Where is Naomi? Let's yes. call her. Naomi. <laughs> hey, should we deal you in? 
Sorry, I'm running late, but you've got to see what we're checking out. There's an artist going around Soho hiding AR pieces for people to find. Ooh. 3D street art? That's cool. Send that link over so we can all look at it. This is stunning. Okay, that is something. That's awesome. Wow. wow. I love the movement. Wait, it's, it's disappearing. This is amazing. Hold on. I'll tip the artist and they'll extend it. Wow. Brilliant. If you guys like it here, I have another room that you're going to love. Check out this forest room. Huh, let's see it. Koi fish that fly? That's new. This is wild. Hey, one sec, Boz. It's Priscilla. Hey, you have to see this. Beast is going crazy. Oh, I love that guy. We've got to show that to the kids. Can you also send that to my dad? I'll message him. All right, see you at home. This place is great, Boz, but there's something i got to get back to. All right, so that's a glimpse of a few ways that we're going to be able to get together and socialize in the metaverse. Yeah, that was going to be pretty cool. Let's see some of the things that um, that they have available to it. Um, in particular, I thought that the the street art was like dope because, like you said, it could be interactive, so you could have something that's there and people can still see it in the real world. But then you also can review it, and it can become, like you said, you know lively and, and and again more immersed immersive um once you have it in the metaverse right so you could see it kind of floating around around you you can you know look at different parts of the artwork um in different areas it kind of reminds me of um i don't know if you guys ever seen like those art the art forms where if you look at it from one angle it looks like one thing but then if you come to the other you'll see like it's a whole bunch of different pieces that put together to make that view from the straight ahead view. So um, yeah, I think that was kind of like something similar to that in, the, in regards to just being able to have multiple views uh, of, a, of one piece of art. Yeah, um, I, I found it very interesting too, how it, the metaverse can recreate your home, or I guess you can, um, I don't know how it's gonna work, but you can recreate different areas like for example, that space area that they showed, obviously that's not your home, right? But you can hang out there, interact with people there. I think they were playing cards or something like that in the video. And you can just do other stuff. I guess while you're in the metaverse, you can interact with people that are in the real world and communicate with them. Um, you know, I guess call them. Um, they can send you pictures. They can send you the digital art. So that's crazy. Basically, I feel like Facebook, well, Meta's goal here is to uh, have people basically barely have to do anything without interacting with Meta. Like everything's Meta. Um, so they'll constantly be making money every single second. I mean, I'm pretty sure they are now, but now they'll have the whole world interact with Meta and people won't have an excuse to go anywhere else. Like for example, they have the Facebook dating, they got the, the Facebook store, you can shop there. Um, you know, you got the, the their YouTube version, right? The Facebook TV uh, situation, they have that. Um, so they have these different um, things to compete with different companies, even Instagram competing with TikTok, with the stories, the reels and stuff like that. Um, you know, you have the communications with WhatsApp and stuff like that. They got uh, the Oculus. They have different uh, businesses up under the meta so people don't have to leave the metaverse. So they're always going to be interacting with a subsidiary of meta in some way. So I think that's their plan. And um, that's pretty interesting um, just to start out. What do you think, um, Sam? Well, um two sides of the coin um i think that it is interesting i think some of it's really cool right like when they showed the 3d art i thought that was pretty cool because then that expands an artist's palette right you do have 3d artists but an artist doesn't have to be a 3d or a digital artist in order to create art and it be um encompassing into the metaverse which i thought was pretty interesting it was pretty cool it may even give oh, them. Hey Sam, you, you made some may mention to something. I just want to add that in real quick. Another thing that I thought that was also unique too was I don't know if you guys caught, but when he was in the house, you could kind of see like he had the waterfalls, and then like on one side it was like a tropical tree, 
But then we looked over a little bit over to the right, it looked like he was like in Alaska with like uh, white trees with like snow all on it too. So it kind of like gave you like this feel where at one point it was tropics and then it was like waterfront. And then on the other side, you kind of saw like snowy trees. And I'm thinking like, wow, that kind of can show some of the contrast and the things that you can get uniquely within the metaverse as opposed to real life, because you're not going to really see palm trees. In, yeah, like, like a flying koi fish. You're not going to see that either. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just little, you know, saying? little stuff that you kind of can see that the metaverse does present itself to, like, you, to your point that makes it unique and, um, and, 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 and um, immersive in that, in that regard. Sorry. Yeah, no, that, and that's pretty much what I was saying. I, th I think some aspects of it pretty interesting and pretty cool, especially the way that they can inter um, that it's interactive with people inside and outside of the metaverse. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to be logged in and well, I don't know about logged in, but I don't have to be in the metaverse using my avatar in order to talk to somebody who's walking down the street not using their avatar. And I thought that that was pretty interesting. Um, and how you can just incorporate real life into the metaverse. So those are some of the things that I found to be interesting. Um, but on the flip side to that, I'll get into my, my thoughts about that as we continue the discussion, when we talk more about some of the hurdles and things like that. All right, so, so I had a few more positives here. Like, so I think this will open up um, the world globally, right? because Facebook's also trying to develop a currency, right? So you don't even, hey, you don't even need your um, country's money, right? It's called uh, Nova, I wanna say. So they're developing cryptocurrency. So, hey, you can, you don't even need your dollars, your, your euro, your, uh, you know, your Naira, whatever currency you have, um, you don't need that. You just, uh, you, per, you buy some of this uh, Novo and you can pay for stuff like you change your avatar, the clothes, you can buy the digital art, the NFT stuff. Um, you can buy for your house, you can um, buy the Man, digital like, furniture. You can buy that waterfront. You can buy the digital, <laughs> yeah, you can buy the digital uh, real estate. You can, um, you know, upgrade it like you would in real life. Like, hey, if you want split seasons, this is how much Novo it will cost. So it, it's definitely going to be a very interesting concept and I think it'll kind of can level a playing field for some people if they adapt it early if you get into it early I feel like you have a chance to win in that type of space um what do you what do you guys think about that I also wanted to say that I think that this is one of the um advancements that's been coming on since I don't know I think the earliest time in which I can remember uh, a, a metaverse type um world was the sins you know, um, that was one of the first time where we seen people kind of build universes, build worlds. And then, you know, I believe it became ever so popular with Fortnite um, recently, because my understanding of that is that you also kind of build, you know, areas and worlds and things of that nature. So um, I just think that this is kind of like the overall, um, the overall movement that society has been going into. Um, but I think that that's also going to um, kind of segue into some of the things that we were going to talk about in our next um, next segment as well. So I don't know if anybody wants to uh, had anything else on this topic before we change or what? Well, um, you, if not, you, I can... said, you just said something that I was going to say. I don't know if it was Sims. I actually do remember. Um, I don't remember which one which one came first. So just part of my ignorance. But I do remember back in the day about probably 15 years ago, you could play games on Facebook, like Farmville and you could yeah, build they got Facebook gaming. In little town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's what it, it seems like a more interactive version of that. Um, I think that it's interesting that you can incorporate parts of your home, um, which I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think that it, I think it's interesting, like beyond, but, no matter if I like it or don't like it, it's definitely interesting. It's extremely innovative. And some aspects of it I find, I think are pretty, pretty cool. Like it's very interesting. So those are my, those are some, oh, and then the way that it'll um, impact society as it relates to connecting the world. I do believe because, you know, so many people are already on Facebook, pretty much everybody is. Not everybody, but pretty much everybody. 
and does um, open up a door to find new ways to con connect people. Um, Malika said something earlier, especially as it related to the NOVA and, and, and finding different ways to um, interact with people. Um, I, think, I think that that has the ability to be very good, but I think it also has the abil ability to be very bad, right? Um, just to kind of segue into some of the hurdles, right? There's the whole digital divide. There are people that don't have access to um, digital currency, social media, a phone, things like that. And so a computer, the internet, and those people are left behind, whether it be because they just don't have the money or maybe their infrastructure is not set up so that they're able to have that type of access. Like there are a lot of different things and it can create a huge, a bigger divide in the digital divide by um, not being available to everybody. And it's and the only reason why I say it's not available to everybody is yeah, Facebook is free, but let's say you get you get Meta, and then you have to pay money to do these things, right? Everybody don't have money for that, so you know what I mean. It just it just can enhance that digital divide. Um, well, Another, I, have a, I have a comment about the digital divide that you mentioned, uh, Sam. Go ahead, and then I'll just, finish what I was saying. Just real quick, um, like with the digital divide, I think eventually we're going to get into a point uh, where, you know, I think Facebook will probably start negotiating deals with different governments in order to provide, you know, low cost to maybe even maybe potentially free internet services just to get these people on that space. Right. And then from there is where the people will be able to purchase things and do their trade and stuff like that. Right. So but the problem is if you can't afford a computer or a phone, who cares if your internet's free? Right. So, and, well, and that, I mean, well, that's a big problem in other countries where, you know, they have to like, purchase, here too. purchase by, you know, the data, right? The data is a big problem, right? You always have to purchase it, it's expensive. And I think maybe Facebook will be able to penetrate that uh, that yeah, area yeah. and yeah. Uh, do something yeah. about it to get more people on the metaverse. You so might be able to get more people on it, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't address the problem that people can't afford to buy the actual device to access. It. Yeah, yeah, phones right. are very expensive, and that now. and that's not and that's not just in other countries like. There are people here that can't get a phone or don't have a computer. Yeah, that, that's a global problem. And, and don't have and don't even have an email address, even though email addresses are free, right? So you know that's what I'm saying about it, um, making the digital divide bigger because then there's more things that people don't have access to. Um, but I, and then I, I, while have, I agree with that, I do think that that might not necessarily be their aim. I, I mean, uh, solely because- I don't it's think like, it's their you, aim. You, it, I, I don't, I'm not saying that it's their aim. I'm saying that it, it has potential to be a problem by leaving more people behind. Because when you have folks who can't afford it, how are they gonna get to it? How are they gonna access it? They don't have the device to access it. And if they do have the device to access it, not everybody will have the money in order to participate even if it's at a very low cost, the only way you can get more people to participate is if it's free because everybody can't. And, and, and that's, that's where I came in with the option of Facebook's going to start negotiating deals with these governments that like, especially the non-Western governments in order to make a way for the, their citizens to get on the metaverse, because in theory, they don't want, they want everybody to be able to be in the metaverse, interact with the metaverse in their daily lives and not have to leave the metaverse for anything or meta, so to speak, Facebook. They don't want them leaving meta or Facebook for anything, right? You get everything as a one-stop shop, right? Except, except like, okay, you gotta each feed yourself, but you wanna be able to order the food on meta, right? So it's like, like the things that you can do um, online without having to do it in real life, that's what Facebook or meta, you know, now known as once, you to be able to do so they, they even uh they have those rooms right so instead of zoom we, we got rooms we can do our meetings there like there, there's so much different competition out there and facebook wants to say hey we got everything you need you don't have to leave us for anything 
And I think that's which is, what I'm, which is what I'm which is what I'm going at too, guys. To your, both of your points, to Sam's point, I don't necessarily think that is necessarily tailored for say um, a rural farmer in Afghan or something like that, or a third third world country. I think it's more so, it, even though it sounds like we want to make it so that we have something that's globalized, and especially with the the Nova coin that you refer to, um, that's going to be like a globalized opportunity for as a centralized type of currency um and and to malik's point rather i think it's more so bit centered around us trying to get organizations us trying to get um individuals who normally would you know participate in these type of games we've seen the big rush with like you said Fortnite, and i think it wasn't been one other game that was a little bit before that one um roblox is the other one thank you i was thinking of um we've seen with like Fortnite and roblox how you know, um, a lot of the younger generation are coming up, kind of becoming um, designers of universes and worlds and things of that nature. So, uh, and then even within some of the Gen X or millennials, rather, uh, within Grand Theft Auto, we, we kind of grew up within those game plays. And it was kind of like, a, if you will, a virtual world. So um, I think that they were able to realize that there is, there is a um, potential desire for for this globalized world. One of the things that I think that it, it really looks for is on the mental aspect of it all, because I think that if people don't necessarily have to leave and interact with people on the day to day, on face to face type of life, like 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 um, type of dealings, how that may have an overall effect towards moving towards that addiction. Like you know, it was one thing to try to get people to stop you know, put, like to stay on your app for longer, right? So, you know, they try to make sure that they have the algorithms to kind of continue to, you know, see or see feed you information that you wanted to see. Um, and then that's how we kind of came along with those algorithm thought process. But now it's like, all right, not only do I not want to keep you off your phones or not off the internet, I want to make the internet stay with you even when you do happen to go out, right? So I think another thing that um, Mark talks about is in order for this thing to adapt, they have to have type of um, like platforms and infrastructures for individuals to be able to be in the metaverse without actually having to like look at a screen. So like you talk about glasses or little optical um, options that allow individuals to, um, to be able to um, interact within their day-to-day -day world, whether it's like something as far as, um, I think they, we talked about it earlier or not talked about it, but there was talks about the Google Pixel glasses and how eventually they will be able to kind of have sync with Google Maps and it can show you like, oh, hey, there's a restaurant around the corner from you. You know, when, on your day-to-day, -day, you might have had to look and if they didn't have the right sign up or anything like that, you wouldn't necessarily know hey, that there's, um, you know, a restaurant in there, or there might be a food court within that building over there. But, you know, you can't see that from the outside if they don't have maybe a billboard or something like that that are, um, that lists all of the different companies that's in that building. So um, I definitely think that there's still a, a way for the metaverse to come to the outside world. And that's the one thing that I think that it, it should maybe start with so that it could kind of build a little bit more for people to use it on the, the global world, like you talked about, or excuse me, to use it more adaptively when you refer to like having people come to rooms and things of that nature, because I don't necessarily see some individuals like looking to, to just be on meta like that, you know, because it's like, if your life is really, I don't want to sound like that, but like if you, if you can go outside and have fun and, and do the things that you want to do, I don't necessarily see you want to just stay inside and be on your computer all the time. So you that, I mean? that was the thing, the next thing that I was actually going to say is a hurdle, right? Because it minimizes human interaction. Like, although people are interacting with one another in the metaverse, they're not physically interacting with each other in real, real time, like their physical presence. And right. so, and that right there can have an impact on your mental health. You know, a lot of times when you talk about these types of things, you don't hear about the impact that it has on mental health and things of that nature. Think about all of the studies they've been doing with kids who spend too much time playing video games, or you see the behavioral issues with children who are on social media or on their phones way too much. You start to see the, these big problems. I mean, granted, 
they are very advanced as it relates to you know being technologically savvy and things of that nature but the but they but they run into issues as it relates to how you properly and appropriately physically interact with people on a day-to-day basis businesses businesses are not going to close because of the metaverse people still got to eat you see what i'm saying and so um people still got to use the bathroom they were still going to want to go to physical museums, like, and they're still going to want to go outside and do things. And with well, having, you go to the metaverse hold on, museum, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Everybody's not going to want to do that, just like everybody's not going to have access to do that. You see what I'm saying? And so, some, think about it in terms of this: when the pandemic happened, and when it started, because it's still going on, and people had to quarantine, there were plenty of things that they created for people to be able to do online. But that didn't stop certain people from being frustrated, from being stuck in the house, which is what what I think E is talking about. Like you still have people who don't want to be cooped up in the house all day on the computer, on the phone. Oh, you get cabin fever, you get restless, you got to get outside, right? And so although you may be able to do these things through the metaverse, people are going to want to go outside to still have engaged. And, and, and maybe practice. that just might be my old frame of thought because I came from that era I don't, of I don't think running so. outside with your friends I don't think on so. bikes. because think about the kids nowadays there's a lot of parents that talk about having problems with getting their kid off the screen they have screen times in which they kind of monitor when the children can be on the screens so I think the younger generation is hooked they're like whatever who cares I don't care about hanging out with such and such I can just I can just see them on a the metaverse and we can go do we can be in Japan and that you know what I mean right like, that their thought process is more so that, but this is why I almost think it becomes a class issue because I really feel like if you have the means to go do the things that you just said, Malik, travel to a, uh, 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 um, an actual uh, museum and go out in the world and, and see and be a participant in the world um, as far as um, whether it's traveling, seeing things, or just, you know, going out, being interactive, going to a game, going to an actual athletic game. Like, don't get me wrong. I think it'd be dope if they kept two court side seats, you know what I'm saying, or two seats in all levels, and they could sell those seats to everyone. And anybody who, you know, maybe couldn't afford a game ticket or couldn't actually make it there could now be a part of it. And you know what I'm saying? Have a view, and you know what I mean? They got cameras there, so they think it kind of make it like it's interactive. And it seems like that person is there watching the game. That's that's amazing. That would but be I think great. The, I for, think the flip side to that, though, E, is that the metaverse is not going to have a hard time selling energy. And what I mean by that is when you go to a game, for example, you can have you can be sitting there watching it. I don't care if you're watching it on the glasses, if you're watching it, you know, on the computer. However, you view it the energy that you feel in that room can't be duplicated unless you're in that room. You can feel however excited you are in the room that you're in with whoever is in the room with you. You can, even if you have a whole bunch of people, like it's one thing, for example, if I'm on a Zoom meeting and somebody says something crazy in the Zoom meeting, everybody's like, you can turn your camera off, you can do that kind of stuff. But when you're live and in person, it's a totally different type of energy. You know what I'm saying? What it feels like. And you can't, bottle that up and sell it because it's just so organic and but that's what i'm that's that's where i refer to like i think it's a class thing because at that point only certain individuals will have the luxury of being able to witness it live be a part of it live so even though i wonder like even though this but is it really a class thing though, e? uh, because yeah because, I do. because of- even and yeah. before the metaverse it was a class thing everybody could yeah. get tickets to go to a game Point blank, right. period. It is a class thing, but it, it also is, you got to think how many users, how many people interact with Facebook, right? But that still has- That's still, over a billion people. But it still relates to class when you're talking about having to pay for these things. Like everybody, and that's what I was saying from the beginning, everybody can't afford that. So, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if all three of us are playing a game, a sim game, or let's say, no, let's not even say that. Let's say we're playing Farmville. We're all creating our own farm. And one of y'all need to build build a friggin' I don't know a tower. Or somebody else needs a cornfield, and somebody else needs to go to the marketplace. Whenever you do that, you can do that for free based on the coins that you earn for free while playing the game. But they also give you the option of being able to physically actually purchase with real people money 
things so that you can go ahead and continue to play that game. Everybody does not have that luxury, right? And so when, and I think that's what E is talking about. Like when you're involved in it, even when it's available to you, people still get left behind because they can't afford to participate in certain aspects or, of it. Or, like, or think, more so for me, I, I, I think, think it's more so, a, point two yeah, no, I think it's more so like, again, the biggest thing in life, I feel like for a lot of people, it's not necessarily the inclusion as much as it is the exclusion, right? You know, you want exclusive stuff. You want, you know, to always stand out, especially in our culture. You know what I'm saying? You definitely want to stand out. You definitely <laughs> want to be the pro. You know, I think how that plays out in the metaverse is it's going to show in coming to my house. Okay, this is my room with all my NFTs. You see all of these paintings and stuff on the wall. I have my own museum. You know what I'm saying? Based off the NFT. So people come, they come to watch my NFT museum. They pay me. Da, 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 da. Now that's great. That creates an opportunity for an individual who maybe became an art designer or, you know, investor in NFTs, built up a nice collection. He now can offer his services or offer his collection to show others. And that's great. That's a way for us to start a new, uh, you know what I'm saying? A new entity or an opportunity for a new business to be done. That's cool on that front. But what I'm, what I'm more so um, kind of speaking about as far as a hesitation within the metaverse is, I think that it will prevent other people because again, you're going to still have people meeting up in real life. Like Sam said, it does something like, you know, to be able to go back to those concerts. We've all been learning to go back to concerts and, you know, rest in peace to the tragedy that had took place to the individuals um, at that Travis Scott thing. Um, from my understanding, excuse me, Astro World, that was a real wild and, and tragic event that took place um, with some, some speculation, I believe, that was so that, you know, there was somebody that was just drugging individuals while at the concert. So I don't know exactly if they had all of that figured out, but I just wanted to go ahead and just let them know that our prayers and thoughts are with the, those individuals that lost their life from trying to go to a we're concert. Hurt. And we're you hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because hundreds of people were hurt. Um, well, I watched and, and the other hundreds that were injured along. So that's another people. positive. Yeah. You can have your concerts there. Safe but but here, here's know? the thing. That's here's a thing. positive. Here's the thing, though. Just, just a side note before we get back into that, Malik, because I, 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 I agree with that, but um, the energy is not the same. That, that still goes to the same energy. But um, as far as the astro world, I watched uh, um, somebody had gone live or something. They were at the concert. When they got there at first, they said Master P was on, the, on stage and he almost got crushed and there wasn't even a lot of people there. So he moved. He, but when Travis Scott came out, he said there was in the center, there was a VIP section and there were, he was trying to pull people onto the VIP section to help save them from being crushed and stuff. And people mm. in that section were giving them a hard time. Like, don't bring people up here pushing and, and, and hitting people that were being saved from being crushed. And I think to go to E's point about exclusivity, when you're talking about exclusivity, even in a metaverse, you create, you're still creating that, um, that caste system right, where certain things are not, not gonna be available to everybody because everybody cannot afford them. And it's not necessarily because it's, because they're poor, but it's because they're rich, right? Or they have the money to be able to have this exclusivity in this particular space when the hope would be that it would be available to everybody on an even playing field, right? And I think that that's where you run into um, one of the issues, but again, you know, on the flip side to that, like you were saying, Malik, when you run into, when you're concerned about safety, you don't have to worry about a mass shooting happening on an online concert. At best, you just have to worry about like technological warfare or mm. hacking and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Which is does does that can absolutely be a big issue if your computer gets hacked, right? Because if your personal and information that, is on it, you can right. you can lose. You can absolutely, lose. I wanted to add on to that part too that we brought into that. Because I, I think that we also have to be mindful of, like you said, if you have these cameras all in your house and people can now, you know what I'm saying, not only just maybe spy on you because they can see, you know what I'm saying, what your home looks like, or just kind of get the, we call it get the drop, if you will, um, in a sense of just being able to 
you know, uh, study what your home looks like, what, you know, what your habits are, maybe. Yeah, Facebook you getting more data go to work. on you. you. You know what I'm saying? So this is an opportunity for you to invite oh, like them into your home and people are now know like the structure of what's in your home. I think I was talking to somebody the other day, like, you know, it could be crazy. You know, what if you got a safe in this and a third and people are watching how you know you put your passcode in or something like that or know where your secret room and stuff is. So it's just like, it's crazy because, um, a lot of the privacy issues that may present itself with this um, is still kind of an influx and, and, and people don't necessarily know about that. So for me, that's one thing that I also think we have to watch when we talk about this metaverse, in addition to um, hoping that we don't get people to be super depressed because they feel like they have to be only on this in, like metaverse in order to be someone. Um, one of the positive things that I do think that we forgot to add is, is when you create your avatar, you can create it to be anything you want. Um, and I think um, they talked about this on a show like Black Magic in which um, uh, you kind of like, you can get that, that influx where things kind of could be fluid in that regard because you could be a guy that created a girl, you know what I'm saying? Or a girl that created a guy avatar, right? So then, you know, people go out, they, you know, have these, avatar relationships they don't really know who they're dealing with you know what i'm saying on the other end because all you really see is just this avatar you know what i'm saying it could be the person so it could take catfishing to a whole nother level another level you know yeah what I'm to a whole nother level now because now you kind of yeah. feel like you have or, or, or you're a koi or fish. something <laughs> yeah you feel what i'm saying you could be a koi fish like when you see that man he was a robot so you could have robots and dogs like it don't you know what i mean but, right the one thing I do think that would come as a positive out of that is that hopefully then people will be able to interact with each other and they can base it off of personality, characters, traits, and not what they think they see. You know, I, I, I think it's kind of foolish because, again, if you ain't got no NFTs in your house, if you a house ain't got, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a cast system like Sam said. Like, it's yeah, going to be a higher. Yeah, it's, the, it's the other part about it, too. But, but I think that ultimately, though, guys, and to wrap up my point, that, you know, hopefully it gets past that on a day-to-day -day that people can kind of react to each other and then they can kind of not have that initial judgment based off of maybe what you look like, in a sense. I mean, even though they will, because, again, that's when it's going to come to, okay, well... What does your avatar dress like? You know what I'm saying? It's like almost like you dress it up like a Barbie doll or something like that. Yeah, so like stuff you might not be able to afford in real life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So now yeah. Nike, they just said Nike applied for the uh, metaverse. So you can best believe it. They're going to drop their releases. Yeah. So you can pay it for your avatar to get it. It's kind of like on the same thing. And not everybody can you afford to like top of the line Nikes. It's not going to be for everybody, right? Right. So and there's that's always going to be people left out, but it. it like you gotta think about how many users are on Facebook, and if most of them can get on the metaverse, that that's a win. And then eventually, over time, we, they can figure out how to get more and more people on the metaverse. Or if well, you're not on the metaverse, on. interact with it. Hold on. Um, there were two things. One thing that he just said, and it just slipped my mind. Um, I'll come back to it. Um, um but the other thing. Wait, what would you? What was what was the last point you just made, E? I'm sorry because I wanted to say. Oh, just that. about like kind of like relationships and people relating to each other. Um, basically, with the gist of it, and that like when with with you not having an avatar, you know what I'm saying? It hopefully can go towards people developing oh. relationships with individuals based on know, character I, and other traits, as opposed yeah, to just. Yeah, you were talking about the have. catfishing. It was a catfishing. Oh, so, which part. leads me to which leads me to something that I touched on earlier in the um podcast about being able to see um, parts of your home, mimic parts of your home, you know, that can potentially be a safety issue, right? If you have, if people have access to being able to see what your home looks like, you have, you have no idea who's watching, right? Um, and so, and, and what, what their intentions are. And you can create a home and it may look one way and your home doesn't look like that. Next thing you know, you got, them people running in your house, you know what I'm saying? Because they think they you got something that they seen in the metaverse. It doesn't mean that it will happen. It just means that there's an open door for it to happen. Well, so, it definitely will be a new level of crime, more sophisticated right. crime. Of right. And the, other, and the other part about that is um, when we, we were talking about, you know, 
all of this access, this, this, this constant access to people in their personal lives, you guys have to remember, Facebook is regulated by the government. And it's not to say that the government, that the big brother's not already watching, but it's like, at what point do you gotta say relax? Like big brother is now sitting on the couch with me as we watch a concert. You know what I'm saying? Or watch a new sneakers drop or whatever it is. And it's at some point you gotta have some, mind your level of privacy, you know? I get it. Some people don't care. Some people do, but it's just something to 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 think about. And the um, last thing that I had, as far as hurdles going forward, is there there has got to be somewhere a concern about there being a monopoly, right? Because if you have metaverse and and Facebook is the only organization that is capitalized off of this, on top of the fact that they already they also own Instagram and you have everybody participating in this this one marketplace, it can create a monopoly. And then it will have to get broken up because then that's how what happens what the government does. It breaks things up when it gets too big. And so when you start talking about these types of conglomerates and the kinds kinds of issues that can come with it, you know, it should definitely be something that I would hope that Mark Zuckerberg has on his radar as it relates to what could happen if metaverse gets too big, if that universe gets to be too big, the portion of it that he has. Yeah, yeah, that was another concern I was going to bring up, like that uh, meta is going to be too big to be able to, for the government to really regulate it and to control it, because they'll have so much power uh, globally that, I mean, basically everybody's going to have to answer to the meta. Like, hey, we got all these people, we control them, we can persuade the vote, we can sway the votes this way or that way. Um, so that's another positive, potentially. It can help regulate. Because it'll get, it'll get broken up. Positive by the it can help be a positive for uh, politics, and it can also be a negative for politics. It's right, positive. but it'll get broken up by the government. You better believe that, because they're not going to have no monopolies. <laughs> well, uh, uh, they're, not having no, they're not having no monopoly. So you guys have to remember, they did it to Bell South. If my Bell you know was how they, You know how they said about the banks back in what 2008, how they were too big to fail, and we had to like give them money, and the government had to give them support. Yeah, no, I'm not even talking about. It might of be that. just like that. Well, too. No, yeah. Yeah. Like, listen, metal about, like, listen, metal like First off, why y'all talking about all the no Bell out? Don't play with me. We ain't, we ain't one of them broke. Uh, right, I'm not like even. No money. I'm not even. Y'all not money. Like cash I know about the Stop money situation, but they might be too Stop big to regulate. I'm not. No, and that's what I'm no, trying to tell you. As, Ma as Bell, we've seen, to as we seen that they had them cases these years. Ma uh, Bell, seen that they had to go through with uh, the privacy Ma Bell, issues. Right, Ma Bell was a phone company. Okay, that had New England Telephone Company. Um. Bell Atlantic or Bell South, all of that. All yeah, of them. Yeah, they were all, all over the place. Right. And the government said, no, you have to break up. And so they broke it up into different, they had to break it into different companies, different organizations, like not subsidiaries under an umbrella. They were they had to get broken up because they were a monopoly and they were becoming they were becoming too powerful. So the government has a mechanism within its power to prevent anything like that from ha happening. And that's when it when they declare it a monopoly. They did the same thing to Microsoft. And, AT and I used to work for AT&T when AT&T was getting ready to buy T-Mobile. And the government stopped that from happening because they believed that AT&T was going to become too big of a company by doing well, I think that's one of the reasons why Facebook is kind of getting into that blockchain technology, the crypto space, so it can be more on a deregulated uh, standpoint but to kind of combat some coming. of those regulations. But even I know if, the government's coming, but, but even even if even if you're stuff. talking about deregulating as it relates to crypto and all of these um, these these different types of um, economy or e-commerce that 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 are out there that the government is still working on regulating, the yeah. monopoly the monopoly mechanism itself they can still break that up regardless of. Um, because they have to be able to regulate everything. But, but, right? but you know, another interesting th point, Sam, about the regulation is the fact that within the meta, they're going to be creating this digital stuff, like digital real estate. So they don't have right. to go out and purchase these other companies. So it's that's still one of the things But it's the still a monopoly, though, because if you think- If they're creating that stuff. 
Yeah, but it's, still, it's just going to be interesting how they would regulate that and how they would go about it. If you're creating, it would break it up at the, at the very at the very minimum. They would break it up. Somebody else would have to do something. Like somebody else might have to do the real estate. Somebody else might have to do the crypto. Some kind of way they would have to find a way to break it up. But they would break it up because the well, government. I, I, I think that where uh, Meta could get in trouble if there's like a Meta Universe competitor doing what they're doing, and then that could you know, actually be purchases a that. I think that would be an easier route for them to go and attack Meta. I think if they had a competitor, that would actually be a saving grace for them to not be broken up because somebody else is in, in the marketplace competing. And that's that's the thing about a, a a monopoly when you have literally taken over a marketplace and and people are not able to compete then you're too big and so yeah, yeah, too yeah. i think we'll have to see it over time because once other uh companies start you know going into the metaverse i think that's when we'll see what uh facebook decides to do or meta well, whatever how, they decide well, how, 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 how they approach and that I think also too because of like you said too that this whole metaverse stuff is built off of like you said blockchains and to my understanding there's different blockchains for different like that uses different cryptocurrencies um for their platforms so maybe there's other universes that may come about because if, if if it's kind of similar to like how so the nfts thing works is certain nfts are brought on certain platforms with you know certain um with certain uh cryptocurrencies or or blockchains if you will um and those ones are only allowed to be purchased by those coins. So if maybe the metaverse is only allowed to be used on the Nova coin, then may, um, possibly we could have someone create, you know, a verse on maybe the Ethereum coin or, you know what I'm saying, a verse on, what's the other one that they got for the NFTs? Uh, it's not Algo. Uh, yeah, they have was it Algo? Okay. Other, yeah, it's, it's a bunch so, of different ones. So but... I think to Sam's point, if we get, other universities like we would have to see how they handle the competitors you know that's why i was saying to that's sam like if they're a competitor there will be there and, already and are again, competitors and, again, and one of there the things are. that you see mm -hmm. and one of the things that we have noticed in the past to her point as well is they'll buy your competitor before they start to get right. too big you know whether it was google or amazon yeah so once they start, start doing, doing that that's well, when i we're think the government will match you up yeah and those acquisitions once they start taking all of those different acquisitions and clients buying all of these companies out, you know, once they kind of rise to a level that they almost look like they can, can become a competitive threat in the future, boom, mm -hmm. acquire them and get it out the way. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, but that was a good point, though. I, I can see something like that uh, happening. Because um, you know, they, are, they are getting too big. Um, they will probably start, you know, um, buying out some of these companies like, oh, Facebook now owns this company. Like, really? So that right. that'll be a that would be a problem um, right. in right. the future. Um, but um, uh, so, so um, before I give my closing, we give our closing remarks. I wanted to um, go ahead and uh, give our motivational minute really quickly, and then um, <laughs> touch on the black business um, again. The motivational minute. I found a couple of quotes, um, and it's about change, right? Because the thing about this whole meta thing is it is exacting change, regardless if you agree with it, regardless if you don't, change is always gonna happen. That's the thing about how the universe moves. We, we are constantly evolving. And so I found a couple quotes. One says, don't be afraid to change. You may lose some good, but you may gain something better. So just remember that as we're continuing to move forward, um, whether it be in the metaverse or in the real world, Never be afraid of change. Um, and then the other quote was, put blinders on, um, put blinders on those things that um, conspire to hold you back, especially the ones in your own head. And so when you're talking, and Meryl Streep said that. And so when you're talking about change, you know, always remember that, um, that you, you have the ability to get in your own way. And so um, a lot of people don't like change. Some people embrace it. But at the end of the day, you got to remember that it's going to happen whether, whether you want it to or not. So um, those are some of the quotes about change, um, and I, which I thought was befitting for today for the simple fact that we're talking about a whole new universe, right? Within mm -hmm. our universe, within our planet, right? So um, just keep that in mind. Um, and as far as our Black business goes, 
It is uh, for the culture. I still have the same page up that I had before. Um, for the culture, each one to each one. And they sell all different types of products. Um, we'll be left off on this page where it had the boxer briefs, scullies, sweatshirts, computer sleeves, jackets, masks, tote bags. They sell hoodies. I'm um, going to click over one or two more pages. Um, socks, mugs, you know, masks, things like that. And everything isn't just for the culture. Like they have other things like this one says, beauty has no skin tone. Um, I can't really see what this says. Let me click on it. Um, it says, there we go. Beauty has no skin tone, dripping melanin. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and check them out. The link, the website is right here. The number four, T-H-E-C-U-L-T-U-R-E-L-L-C.com. So that's for the number four, the culture, LLC.com. Check them out, get you some stuff. Um, the holidays are coming up, so won't, won't hurt to grab some, grab some swag. Um, so, you know, uh, that's our black business. Make sure you tap into them. Um, in closing, I think as it relates to the metaverse, I think things are gonna be very interesting, right? On, on so many fronts. One, because you're gonna be seeing this new innovative thing, right? in new ways to compete in the marketplace. Um, and I think that that's gonna be interesting. It is gonna expand art, marketing, branding, all these other things because it's gonna be in this digital universe. It's gonna find, you're gonna find new ways to interact with people. Um, all, of that, all of that stuff is gonna be super cool. But at the same time, you know, we run into a lot of issues as it relates to um, safety, um, monopoly, leave, getting left behind time financially, um, things like that. So it's going to be um, a very interesting thing to see play out and also to participation, because although you have all these people with access, not everybody's going to be wanting to participate. So, you know, I think the metaverse is, is a great innovative idea, but it's going to be very interesting to see how things roll out, uh, the way our government deals with it, um, and how society participates in it and if they're willing to because you know it's called metaverse facebook is changing name to meta but you know some people don't like that kind of change and they may not be willing to participate or even go forth with calling it meta <laughs> people might still be like oh going on facebook thing <laughs> you know what i'm saying right <laughs> folks is good for giving something its own name so i think yeah, that is because the kids are catch on yeah, so I think it's pretty interesting and I think it's gonna be interesting to see how all of that stuff rolls out. Um, so that's my closing remark. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give my socials and then my co-hosts can give their closing remarks and their socials before we close out. So if you guys wanna follow me, um, you can follow me right here on Facebook at Samantha Adams, type in ESQ or on um, Instagram at Samantha Renee 77 underscore ESQ. Make sure you check us out on Facebook Instagram and our, our YouTube page at the Counterpoise Podcast. If you have any um, any ideas about topics, you can always DM us, send us a message, or just write a post. You know, we're always open to hear and listen. Um, and make sure you tap in. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Check us out every Wednesday for our What's Up Wednesday segment on Instagram at 8.30 p.m. and right here on Facebook at noon on Sundays. One other thing, guys, we were highlighted in Shout Out Magazine, Shout Out Atlanta. So shout out to Shout Out Atlanta because they did an article on us. So you guys make sure you go check that, check that out too. We'll go ahead and make sure we have that posted for you guys to go ahead and see. Absolutely, absolutely. And I wanted to go ahead and jump on here real quick and just leave one of my closing remarks. Um, I think that to the point that Malik had made earlier too, that we have an excellent opportunity for some um, innovators to be able to find a way to be immersive in this time. I think that people should be encouraged, but knowing that there's a new frontier, it's almost like a gold rush or uh, how it was when the industrial revolution came about, where there were times in which, you know, there was a way in which, um, I'll say quality of life may have changed for Americans. And this is, if people kind of get adapted to it and, and try to jump on and educate themselves to some things, I think that this is an opportunity for a lot of individuals who may not have more of a traditional education or things of that nature to find a way 
to uh, latch on to something um, and create something that could be beneficial to them and allow them to be able to experience some of the uh, um, American dream, if you will. So that's one of the things that I wanted to, to encourage people with within, the, within um, the discussion of today. I also want to uh, say that also to the younger generation to be mindful, to always be be willing to engage with others to understand the, the quality and the, um, the importance that is needed in building bonds with people directly. Um, the relationships that you can forge with that, the uh, abilities that you'll be able to, to, to do more with because of the fact that you're able to be relatable to individuals and that you have a skill set um, that, it, that you have a skill set as well as a talent that other people will want to have around them because of the way you are able to communicate with them, because of the way that you're able to work and collaborate with them. It will, it will serve you a lot better to um, adapt those type of skill sets. So I wouldn't want anyone to look at this and think that, okay, cool, like it's perfect. I don't never have to leave. I don't never have to end. I can just, you know, be in my metaverse and do my own thing. Um, I would encourage and I would be, I would, <laughs> excuse me, I would caution individuals from having that type of viewpoint because I think that it'll lead to a, a more depressive and lonely state. Um, lastly, I just want to give my socials, which is that guy 2104. Uh, you guys can reach out to me on Instagram with that or any comments or questions that you may have. Um, and with that, I just want to encourage everybody to tell you thank you for reaching out. You can catch us on Wednesdays at around 8.30 on um, approximately around 8.30 on Instagram where we'll be, you know, kind of going on lighter subjects and giving you guys more opportunity to interact with us as well as communicate with us um, on, on whatever the topic is of the day and get to know more about us. So thank you guys. And don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell two more friends. And we could all be friends in the metaverse or in the U.S. <laughs> in the, in the regular world. universe. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. with my closing remarks, I'm going to say, uh, you know, th this is the future. Um, just from Facebook's move, uh, you know, crypto and everything and how everybody's starting to adopt this. Hey, I want to take my salary in Bitcoin. Hey, I want to do this with cryptocurrency. Um, people are seeing the value with that, with rising inflation costs, the rising prices of gas, food costs, everything, inflation at an all-time high. Things are just uh, crazy right now in the world, right, with all the prices and stuff um, compared to the people's wages. Uh, some people may find this avenue as a way for them to potentially make money. You could potentially get a job, have a, a metaverse job, right? You can work your metaverse job. So you're in the metaverse and you're doing work there. You know, maybe you're a metaverse interior designer or something. Somebody's like, hey, come decorate my crib, my, my metaverse crib. So it, it can open up a whole new economy, a whole new market, um, whole new opportunities if you look at it like that. It also comes with its consequences and cons, like we mentioned, some of the hurdles, you know, as far as regulation goes. Uh, as far as uh, Meta becoming too big and trying to take over other companies, um, stuff like that. So it, it's definitely a new frontier, definitely a digital revolution where uh, that's upon us right now. And um, you know, I'm I'm pretty interested in seeing what's you know what does Meta and the rest of the metaverse have to hold. So, um, but if anybody wants to connect with me, you can connect with me at. Leek and Foster on all social media handles and uh, my co-hosts, they pretty much said the rest, um, you know, follow us at Counterports Podcast, like, share, comment. If you want us to talk about the topic, you can shoot us a DM um, at Counterports Podcast on Facebook, the person page and on the Instagram handle or message us on YouTube as well. So we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. And um, that's it, guys. It was a pleasure. Let me take us home here. Absolutely.